Well Baltimore held back Miami from getting a first down. So now the ball which is at the 11. Mark it back. They're going to try for a 29 yard field goal and try for their first lead today. This is Jay Feely who has just put Miami on top by three with 156 to play. Brian Billick and his offense will have no timeouts and a rookie quarterback to lead them. 13 unanswered Miami second half points. And Feely puts it through. Cam Cameron is a minute and 56 seconds away from his first win as a head coach in the NFL. Now, let's swing our attention to Baltimore. Rookie quarterback who took his first naps last week. Bowler is out with the mild concussion. Jason Taylor, by the way, has come back out on the field with a left foot injury. And we think we know how important it is to him. What's going through this kid's mind right now? Well, you know this with Troy Smith. He's had limited reps in practice this week. The two-minute drill. How comfortable is he? How much of the playbook is going to be available to him? And how how good of a job can he do getting this group up at the line of scrimmage, calling the plays, getting the protection straightened out, and making good decisions with no timeouts left? Let's see how Feely kicks off here because last week, Yaman Figures returned a touchdown, a kickoff, 94 yards for a TD. He'll boot it. And out of bounds. So now that goes to the 40 yard line. That's the second time that has happened today. Kickoff out of bounds. Oh, that's horrible. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. First and 10, Baltimore. I'll tell you what, you can see Keith Armstrong there, the special teams coach. This, it's hard not to choke a kicker in that situation. He did it to start the game and gave him good field position. And now, at a critical juncture in the game, all you got to do is have a good kick and cover it. You give him the ball at the 40 yard line. Jason Taylor is on the field for Miami. With Wright and Holiday, they'll have a three man defensive line. Six defensive backs. It's first and ten. McGahee in the backfield. Troy Smith. Right on the money, and it's caught by Clayton. Grabbed on the play by Goodman. A 13 yard catch, his first catch today. He's down to the 47 yard line. No timeouts remaining for Baltimore. First and 10. Smith again. Right on the money. Goodman can't make the stop on Clayton, who's shoved out of bounds at the 32 yard line. A 15 yard catch, back to back completions. And how critical was that kickoff? Now they're just about in field goal range. Wow. At the 32 yard line of Miami. And Troy Smith doing a good job making good decisions and good accurate throws on those slant routes. Darling is the third receiver. Nichols secondary remains. It's McGahee on first and 10. Brought down by Michael Lehan on a gain of three. He's down to the 28 yard line. No timeouts remaining for Baltimore. You see Brian Billick over there. He's calling the plays in to Troy Smith. Troy Smith doing a good job relaying that information to the line and to the receivers. It's second down and seven. No changes either way. Smith calmly sits. What a catch by Sipniewski, the tight end. He had the size advantage on the smaller defensive back, Will Allen. It's a gain of eight. The clock is stopped. I'll tell you what, Troy Smith is impressing me. He's got nerves of steel. He comes into this game, this situation, a difficult situation, and he's made three solid throws. 21 yard line. He had to go to the sideline to get the play from Billick. Play clock is at 18, so plenty of time with which to work here. The play clock at 18, the big clock you see. Baltimore out of timeouts. They began this drive on the 40. Troy Smith. Oh, look at that backpedaling move. Throw it away. Richie does. Does not take the loss. 49 seconds left. A lot of composure for this young rookie quarterback. And the other thing we know about Troy Smith is he's a very athletic player. 
He can make plays with his legs. And the other thing he can do is he can escape pressure. You can see he does a nice job there, sensing the, the pressure coming around, closing in on him. Does a nice job getting outside and throwing it away. It's second down and 10. You see the joy, the joy on Cam's face is now gone to concern. Vickers, the tight end in motion. The fake to McGahee. Holiday is chasing him. Knocked away. Great defensive play. Diving in front was Will Allen. On a pass intended for Derek Mason. It's third down and 10. And you just watch, watch Quinn Sipniewski right here. He's right there. That's where the ball has to go. He's wide open in the flat. Now you look back across the formation. I learned a long time ago, never passed up the first one for the second one. Six defensive backs. Third down and ten. Yep. Willis McGahee. Oh, he busts free. He's inside the ten. And eventually brought down by Jason Allen on third and ten. They call a running play, which gives him 12. Now they're going to try and clock it, stop the clock, so they can have another shot at the end zone. Now it's second down. Second down and goal at the nine. Now what about this rookie quarterback, the Heisman Trophy winner, who played late last week and was good, has played for a second time this week and has been just short of great. And the amazing thing is you know he didn't get a lot of reps this week in practice, but now they're in a situation at second and 10 with 23 seconds. They have at least two opportunities to take a shot in the end zone. Darling and Mason to the bottom of your screen. Clayton to the top, Sipniewski in the slot, McGahee in the backfield. Second and goal. Smith. And looking for Clayton knocked away on the play. Incomplete, no yellow on the field. The coverage on the play by Andre Goodman. Going for Mark Clayton. Boy, I like the thought process. I like the fact that they're being aggressive and they're taking a shot. A little double move. That's a good job there. Really good job by Andre Goodman getting his hand up, trying to knock that one away. The Ravens took over at their 40 with 156 left. Tenth play of the drive coming up. It's third and goal at the 10. Same receiver alignment. Got to be smart here. A sack, and the game is just about over. Five defensive backs. Smith. Caught Darling. Oh, and he's down at the one. He is down at the one. Covering was Schulters. And Daniels. It's a gain of nine. Now you have a decision to make because you're Brian Billick. Do you kick the field goal or do you go for it? We're going to kick the field goal. Wow. We're going to tie the game. Wow. Wow. You well, see, what would you do? Well, you see, Brian, he wasn't happy. He started yelling at some of the some of the offensive players coming off the field. He said, don't question. Don't question me. I make the decisions around here. The odds are, look at the, they're inside the yard line. But the, he's, he's playing the odds. You kick the field goal and you play for overtime. Like an extra point, 18 yard field goal to tie the game to 12 seconds left in regulation, and we are tied at 16. Eight seconds left. There was a game in Kansas City a couple of years ago. Same situation in Kansas City. Elected to go for it in that situation against the Raiders. Larry they, Johnson. Larry Johnson over the top for the touchdown, and that was it. Well, in a season where both teams are testing young players because they're obviously looking to next year and beyond, and for all the quarterback issues in Baltimore, Brian Billick has got to feel pretty good about what he's seen for a second consecutive week from this quarterback out of Ohio State, rookie Troy Smith. I tell you what, I've been impressed with both of these football teams. Both both teams, the players, they've put forth a great deal of energy. There's been some passionate play, some physical play, and you know that this game is important. You wouldn't think so. A team that's 0-13 facing another team that's lost seven straight, but both play, both teams have played with a great deal of passion and energy today.
With no timeouts, he took the team 59 yards and 11 plays. And Troy Smith puts three up on the board to tie the game with eight seconds left in regulation. Now you get the squib kick. And one shot here to try and return one. And Stover's 18-yard field goal has put it at 16 apiece. And Ted Ginn. Ooh, let that one go out of bounds. And then he runs out of bounds, and three seconds remain in regulation. I think I would have elected to let that one go out of bounds, get the ball to 40, and take a shot, run a deep bench route. 20 25 yard bench route and try and kick a long field goal. Look at those numbers there by Cleo Lemon 22 of 38. The impressive thing is the zero interceptions. Did a nice job today managing the game and not turning the ball over. He'll go to a knee with three seconds to play in regulation. And overtime for two desperate teams. Oh boy, this game is, is a, it's such a momentum is so important. You know, you saw that it, you get the sense that it swung back, certainly in the second half to Miami. They were playing so much better offensively. Baltimore in the second half just had one first down and 16 total yards on offense and yet Troy Smith comes in there directs him all the way down the field sets him up for the, the game tying field goal just updating the injury situation Jason Taylor was out for a while came back in injured foot but did play that last defensive we're series play one quarter of overtime each team will have two timeouts Anything that needs to be reviewed will come from the replay booth. Heads, tails. Baltimore, what's your call? Tails. Team that wins that coin toss usually it wins overtime. Tail. Seven of 11 this season. And so that sets the stage. Baltimore wins the toss. Rumors are that owner Wayne Huizenga has put this team up for sale. Today he's watching his team winless so far, trying to avoid infamy by recording their first win of the season. Next week they take on New England. I don't think they'll win next week. Then they have Cincinnati back here, week 17. Doesn't get any easier in this business. That's what you know when you sign up. We're in overtime. The mind figures. We'll leave it in to the 20 yard line on the touchback, first down and 10. Well, let's put your uh, cap back on again. What's facing him? What's he thinking about? How do the coaches position him for this drive? Well, you want to see if he can repeat that same magic he had last drive. He did a nice job. He showed some good poise. The thing that I liked, the ball came out of his hands quick. He was decisive. He made good decisions. And Brian Billick, you can tell. He helped them with the play calling. Some quick rhythm throws to try and get him comfortable early. Jason Taylor is on the field. Need a three and out if you're Miami. There's one tight end, and McLean is the fullback, and McGahee is in the backfield, and it's first and ten. McGahee. Locked down by Pope, the linebacker, after a gain of five, and he works his way to the 25-yard line. This Miami defense has done a pretty good job today containing Willis McGahee. He's had 25 carries, 86 yards. He's, they've kept him under 100, and they've really forced him up inside and haven't allowed him to bounce runs to the edge where he can be really dangerous. Taylor, right. Holiday on that defensive line. It's second and five with two tight ends. Good block by Yonda. Good block by Mason. There goes Willis McGahee. And he says he wasn't down, but they do blow the whistle. 44-yard line, 19 yards on the run. Brought down on the play. There's a flag. There's a late flag thrown. The tackle was made by Pope, the linebacker.
Oh, McGee. There is no foul for delay a game for spiking the ball. That's what they were deciding, and you saw it just at the tail end of our replay. McGee now has gone over 100 yards today in front of family and friends. He's from the Miami area, his fifth 100 yard game this season, and just shy of 1,200 yards on the year. First down. Musa Smith is the running back. He runs outside. Another block by Mason. A missed tackle by Schultz. And the run takes him to the 40-yard line, brought down by Jason Allen. A 16-yard run. Two outstanding runs by Brian Billick's running backs. And what's happening now is they're getting outside. They're bouncing runs. And Miami, there's Lance Shoulders. They're not doing a good enough job forcing the run back up inside. The previous play, we saw Jason Taylor get hooked. And the run got outside him. You can't allow that to happen. Fafita is coming on the defensive line for Miami. McGahee back in the game. First down and 10 from the 40. It's McGahee. He was hit by Pope, the linebacker, to the 38 yard line on a gain of two yards. And now you got to do whatever you can do defensively. You, you, you know they're going to try and run the ball down. You see Keith Trailer coming back into the game. They're right on the verge. You can see Matt Stover, his, his target line, his range. He doesn't have that real strong leg that he once did. They have to get inside a little bit closer. That's why you have to find a way to shut him down here on second and third down. There are two tight ends. Second down and eight from the 38. The running back is Mike Anderson who offers a block and it goes outside. It's Mason right in front of Lehan. It's a gain of four down to the 34 yard line. We welcome you all to Miami, Florida, where Baltimore jumped off to a 13 to 3 lead. Miami then took a lead. And then Baltimore, with rookie Heisman Trophy quarterback out of Ohio State, Troy Smith, led him downfield. A game tying field goal by Stover. The coin flip goes to Baltimore. Losers of seven consecutive games. Third down and four. And a huge hole. Mike Anderson, the former Bronco and NFL Rookie of the Year, plows his way to the 25. And he was brought down on the play by Pope. It's a gain of nine. And the best plays on this drive, Rich, have been on the ground for Baltimore. And you see they do a nice job. Laron McClain, the fullback. They're making people move. They're getting hats on people. And Mike Anderson comes in and does a nice job falling forward. The starting quarterback, Kyle Bowler, out with a mild concussion. Ray Lewis has broken his hand. He's out on defense. Seventh play of the drive, first down and ten. And McGahee back in. And he carves his way in the grasp of Keith Trailer. There's a gain of a yard to the 24. You know, I go back to Baltimore's game against New England, the Monday night meltdown at the very end where New England scored and Bart Scott threw the official's flag. They lost their poise at the end at a critical time. Today, they fall behind, they hang in there, they battle back, they lose the quarterback. Troy Smith comes in and does a nice job, but they've kept their poise. Second down and nine, Willis McGahee, put down by Jason Taylor, the author of a couple of sacks today and a blocked field goal. It's a loss of three, and he shoved him back to the 27-yard line. You just know how important this game is to Jason Taylor. But I'll tell you what, there's been a number of times today where they haven't even blocked him. They haven't gotten a body on him, and you just can't let a player as athletic as Jason Taylor free in your backfield. Musa Smith is coming to take the place of McGahee. It is third down and 12. Musa Smith. With the teeth of that Miami defense and brought down after a major gain of a yard to the 26 yard line and here comes Matt Stover. He has five game winning field goals in overtime in his career five for five. Remember now Stover had one block earlier today I just mentioned that Jason Taylor got him back in the first half right before halftime. He's one of the most accurate kickers. It's a 44 yarder to win the game. Timeout taken by Miami. You just knew that was coming. I don't think Cam wanted it that early. You can see him. Might have jumped the gun there with the timeout. 
Well, Rich, the rookie quarterback, Troy Smith, has done it again. Two consecutive drives. He's taken his team downfield, not for touchdowns, but into field goal range, one to tie the game and perhaps here to win the game. And this is how you win over your teammates. We talked about this earlier today. When you're young, when you're inexperienced, you come into a game like this and you're behind and you find a way to make good decisions and you find a way to convert third downs. That's how you went over your teammates with a performance like Troy Smith put on today. Miami thought they had this game. They went up by three and then the defense with Baltimore not having a single timeout just shredded them downfield and got deep into Miami territory and settled for three. Here is a 44 yard field goal to win it. Remember Jason Taylor blocked one earlier. High snap by Katula. This kick is no good. Bad snap by Katula. There is no wind inside the stadium today. He just missed it from 44. His first career miss in overtime. Cam Cameron in his first year with the Dolphins trying to avoid infamy. 0-13 coming in and Brian Billick has his own set of issues. Ryan Billich, Baltimore Ravens have lost seven consecutive games. And now, Leo from the 34. It'll be first and ten. This is Booker is devoured on the play by Kelly Gregg and a loss of three yards. Back to the 31 again. Ray Lewis is out. Nick Rison is taking his place in the middle. I'll tell you what, Kelly Gregg has had a very good day. And you know, he's a type of nose tackle. He doesn't take plays off. He plays with a great deal of energy, a lot of emotion, and he gets a lot of push up the middle. And where he really shows up is in the run defense. It's second down and 13 yards to go from the 31. Oh, well, look how soft they're playing down here. Battle with the block. Lemon on the move. Put the ball away. Jeez. And he does. He scrambles his way for five. He's brought down at the 36 yard line. And he was brought down in the play by Dewan Landry in the secondary. That brings up third down and eight. And he's careless with the ball in the pocket. There should be two hands on the ball. Now watch him when he scrambles. Watch that ball's hanging out there. There's players all around him. You gotta do a good job holding that ball high and tight. Ball security, so important for a quarterback. Rex Ryan, the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, has put six defensive backs out on the field. Third down and eight. Four receivers, including Camarillo, for Cleo Lemon. That's caught by Camarillo. It's a foot race with Lindbergh. Miami has won. Miami has won. Touchdown catch and run of 64 yards by Camarillo. As the Dolphins author their longest play from scrimmage this year and record their first win of the season. Well, I'll tell you, that is great to see. They haven't had a chance to smile, to laugh, to enjoy each other all season. It's never ended quite the way they drew it up, but today it does for Camp Cameron and the Dolphins. Just a great throw. Look at the protections good. Good anticipation. And he gets Camarillo on the upfield number and gets him into the transition of the run. 
Cleo Lemon did a nice job today under some tough circumstances. Wow, what a finish. The first touchdown reception of Greg Camarillo's career is a game winner in Miami today.